Is your job comparable to a man who doesn't know where he's going? Is your job comparable to a blind man who is working and has no guidance? If this is true of the church, of the community, of the government, then you really need to pray. Because clearly there is judgment come upon that government of that church. This is where they are like that. And I want us to look at the church today and see whether this is strong peace and church today. Is our church like a broken man? Is this traveling from pillar to post, from one district to another one? As if is a ship without the captain, being blown from one point to another by the wind, by the waves of the sea. Is that the picture of our church of today? From one trouble to another, from one crisis to another. As if there's no direction, as if there's no structure, as if there's no governance in the church. If you say yes to this in your heart, then you need to pray for our church. And whatever church you are, community you are, you repeat this description, you need to really pray. Because the Lord has poured out the spirit of slumber on your leaders and closed the eyes of the prophets and rulers so that they don't know where they are going. That is why they are staggering from one crisis to another. As if they cannot see, as if they have no direction, as if they have no control, as if they are drunk. You really need to pray. So let's go uh, to Micah 3 6. Micah 3 6. Psalm 69 23. And Romans 11 8. Mm-hmm. Yes. Therefore, mm-hmm. you shall have my without vision. You have my without vision. Mm-hmm. And shall have darkness without revelation. Huh? The sun shall go down on the prophets. See? And the days are the dark of them. Ah. The songs that go down and prophets and the days are the dark That's exactly what is happening in the church today. The prophets are no more seeing visions of hearing from God. And the same thing with the rulers. This is why the church is as if it has no direction. Because there's no guidance from the Holy Spirit that are doing their own thing. They give their parents and see they're led by the Spirit of God when actually call their nuts. If they're led by the Spirit of God, your church will be the same in this thing today. Because God is not the son of all and God of the son of chaos. The fact that the church is like confused, doesn't have any directions of what's happening, what is doing, means there is no overall government from, from God Himself. Remember in the case of Saul. After Saul had seen against God and disobeyed him, and that was it that God did not answer Saul by vision, by prophets, or by dreams. What happened to Saul? He had no direction, we know what to do. Then what did he do? He went to the reach of the end of And that was how Samuel told him when Samuel was raised from the dead by the spirit of Samuel. He told him that he was be with him the next day. And upon hearing that Saul collapsed. You see, he resorted to what he should not do because God had closed all forms of contact with him because of his sin. See, sin closes your communication with God because God will not share his glory with somebody who is rebelling against him. If you keep on rebelling against him by your way of life, by your tradition, then God will not really share his direction with you. God will not really share his sins with those who fear him. See? Romans 11 verse 8 says, According to the reason God has given them the spirit of slumber, see? Eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And they did say, Let the table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block. That is exactly the picture of the church today. And that's why we're reading this message. God put his seed of slumber on his prophets and the lawyers. Because any society
society without direction from God or sought in man-made ways and the world. God's will, because man's ways are God's ways. God says that as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than the ways, and my thoughts higher than thoughts. If you want to be successful in this life, you need direction from God. Look at the children in their teachings. God guided them by the cloud by day and the fire by night. They did not walk and each from where they were until the cloud moved. Because they knew all around them were dangers and enemies. And if they were to move on their own, they would fall to the enemies and they were slaughtered. So they totally depend on God. And this is where you and I have to be. The position of complete dependence on God for His direction. <coughs> because if you try to do it on your own, you will suddenly fall into trouble. And this picture of a staggering man, of a that you call drunken, but not with wine, is a picture of the church today. The church is no longer being guided by the Holy Spirit, it's not being guided by man's precepts. A man's ways, a man's thinking. This is where there's no fruit in the church. No salvation, no healing, nothing. The power of God has departed. He cannot. So, he said, and the vision of all is to come unto you as the words of the Lord and sealed, which may be the to one that is land, that is saying, with this I pray thee, and he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. So he, he has said the vision of the prophets is sealed. Now there is vision there, but their eyes have been blocked from seeing it. You see? It's like she gave a book which is closed to somebody who can read. And the person tells you, I can't, because the book is covered. The same way the vision from God, the direction from God, has been closed to their rulers and the prophets. Daniel 12 verse 4, Matthew 11 25. Here we start more. Daniel 12 verse 4, Matthew 11 25. Yes, Matthew 11. But you, Daniel, yes. shut all the works uh -huh. and seal the book mm -hmm. until the time of the end. Yes. Many shall run go and forth. Yes. And many shall increase. That's it. They shut up the world of the book. See it. That's the way God's vision, God's secrets, God's direction have been sealed to the rulers and the prophets of this current generation and in the generation at the time. Matthew 11 25 said, At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, God of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto thee. He was so bad, but so pleased, he was seen good in your sight. See? He so said, You are hidden your secrets from the wise and prudence. Now, of people, the leaders, the advisors, you can seal for them. And we will need to be. Those babies are babies in Christ. They are the ones who truly worship God in spirit and in truth, and not dependent upon man. You know, most of the church. Worship God in the flesh according to what is taught by them, by the leaders, what they know. But they don't get worship God in spirit. They are worshiping the worship of men. See? That's the problem. Until we come back to worshiping God in spirit and in truth, this same problem, this same curse, is going to continue on the church and its leadership. And give another example. Like, it's like the book is never to give me a small hand, something that I cannot read. Even though it's open, and you say, read this, I pray it, and they say, I have not done it. So, it's the same thing as somebody who is not it, but the book is sealed. <laughs> one can read, but the book is closed. Another one cannot read, and the book is open. open. It's the same end results, which is, Neither can see the vision or hear from God. It's a terrible thing when you can no longer hear from God because 
then you are left to devices that Satan will just keep to all over the place. It's only by the help of God that you are not able to overcome this world. Because there are many things you don't know and you cannot see that God reveals to us, you know, that He tells us because we worship Him in spirit and truth. But when we go away from Him and we can do our own things, our own way, worship God the way we want to, regardless of His own person, what He has made now for us, for ours, God stops revealing things to us and we are left on our own devices. This is exactly what happened then and what is happening now. We are going away from God. You know? Psalm 25 says that the secret of the Lord, Psalm 25 verse 14, says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. See? He will show them his covenant. So if you want to have the secret of the Lord, and to know his covenant, his secrets, you must fear him. What does that mean? You must obey him. You must worship him in spirit and truth. That's the only time he will reveal his gems to you. His secrets, his covenant will reveal to you. Now, you cannot buy that anywhere, no matter how rich you are. God's secrets cannot be bought. So the only way to get it is to obey him according to his own instructions, not your own way. Many people worship God their own way, and that worship is not acceptable. So it was the spirit, and he loves those who worship him what? In spirit and in truth. Most of our worship of God is not the spirit, rather it is the flesh. And he continues and says, Therefore, the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me, and this is very carefully, as much as this people draw near me with their mouths, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear, this is their fear of me, is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, we hold our position to be marvelous work among these people. Even the marvelous work in the one man. All of us see. So the reason why the mission is close to them and their rulers, the reason why God has stopped to talk to them and their leaders is because they only worship God sufficiently. Their hearts do not worship God. Okay, let me give you a picture, like an example. These people come to church. This is an example. Church members, they come to church to wear their standard and white garments. They sing the songs, they roll on the floor, they dance, they give the offerings. But once they leave the church, they begin to do evil practices. They begin to speak evil things. They go where they should go. Even inside the church, they don't worship God the way he wants to In the church, they begin to sing. At this time, all the songs, they spray money, they wear transparent garments, they begin to merchandise and sell things in the church, and nobody corrects them. So their worship of me is taught by the Christian of me. In other words, the way they worship God. It's not according to what God wants, but what they choose to do, which is not acceptable to God. You see, you can choose to serve God your own way, or you can choose to serve God the way He wants you to serve Him. Which one are you going to take? The reason why the church is like this is because people are choosing to worship God the way they want to worship Him, not God's ways, not even that. Their hearts are bad from him, they are not worship God according to his instructions. You know, worshiping God is not only coming to church on Sunday and singing songs and praying. You know, you worship God 24 7, every day of your life, every minute you worship God. By the way you speak, the way you dress, the what you eat, who your friends are, 
Those are things. You must be God because every day you go out the past of Christ. So he says they are worship. So this will draw near me with the master. Anybody looking at these people will think that, oh, they love God so much. Look at the way they sing. Look at the way they dance. But reality, if you look at their personal lives, you see that they are not worshiping God at all. If you look just a bit deeper, you find the truth about them. So all that really just show for show. In reality, they don't really love God. They don't really worship Him. When you say they don't love God, Jesus Christ said, by this people who know that you love me, when? When you obey my commandments. It's not by dancing, it's not by your sutana or the garbage you're wearing that means you love God. No, no, no. It's what you do outside the church, what you do to your fellow human being. Do you pay your rights and offerings? These are the things. So this is what they draw near me with their lips and their mouths. No, oh, they sing the songs, but they remove their heart far from me. So you cannot fool God by coming to church and you know, you know, singing and doing all these things. You can fool people, people will think that you are next to Jesus Christ, but you cannot fool God because God knows who you really are. It was Psalm 17, verse 1. Jeremiah 12, verse 2. Jeremiah 12, verse 2. 
It will do you while you pray, enter into your process. And when you are shocked, they will pray. Come to your Father, which is a secret. And your Father will share the secret. So I reward you openly. See? God is saying, you do be better stop pretending. And be real to me. Because right now they don't be real. I know who you really are. When you know what is looking, what you do in your houses, or what you do on your phone, when you watch pornography, and you miss all these bad websites, and you subscribe to all these pornographic magazines, and you talk dirty, and you're sexting to women, and yet you're a prophet. All one told me that she went to the church, and within a week, one of the prophets in the church said, sexting her, sending her naked pictures of himself. Mm. And she had to go to the church because of that. You see? But to everybody in that church, that problem was, oh, the man of God prophesies. God is using me. But behind it, he was sending naked pictures of himself to the one who just went to have an affair with her. This is what God is saying. You see, we cannot fool God. And this is why God showed the vision. God said, I'm not going to keep on giving you my secrets and leading you when the natural body you are, are rebelling against me. You're not doing what I want. I won't give you my secrets. And I will do the same. You know, I mean, can I share your precious things with people who are doing evil against you? Because they will continue to do more of this. But when you show the vision, they will learn their mistakes and return to you. So, I said, I will proceed. So that precept, the, the fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. What does it say? In other words, the worship of God is not according to God's instructions, according to what the elders have taught them. So, they say in, in this church, they say, if I know, it's the tenants. It's the tenants are supposed to do it like this, they are supposed to do it like that. If you don't do it, you are committing the sin. They never ask, is this. Way, is this the way Jesus wants? But they ask, this is the way the tenants are, these are the armor. This is what we have to do. The way our leaders, our, our fathers told us to do this. But is that the way Jesus told you to do this? Or what you're doing, is it a sin against Jesus? Even when we are not from the tenants, people never ask that question. All they want is, oh, you have to do like this, you have to use this, you have to use that, you have to. <laughs> they, they know more about the text of the church than about the Bible. They know more about the power of the church than about Jesus Christ. It is a serious, grievous sin. And I said that I will you because they are worship, really worshiping men, not God. You see? This is why God throws the mission and no longer speaks to the rulers and the prophets. So, but the precepts are the precepts of men. Let's go to Colossians 2.22. <coughs> we must begin to discern the difference between what God wants and what men wants. The many of the things we do in the church as a tenant, I'm going to watch, they are not of God. They are man-made. Somebody started doing it, other people copied them. And nobody bothered to ask, why are you even doing this? What is the value of this thing you are doing? Is this of God? Is this godly? You just copy and people just keep on doing it. Somebody got us to question whether this is God ordained or not. Oh, the father did it, somebody wanted to make it, started it, and then whether the company ever sins. For example, 22 says, which are to perish when using after the commandments and doctrines of men. See? In the book of verse 21, verse 20 it says, for example, 220. Wherefore, if you are dead with Christ from the rudiments of this world, why, as though living in this world, are you subject to ordinances? Now listen, touch not, taste not, handle not, using after the commandment and the of men. See? So if you are dead in this world, you are in Christ now, why all these human regulations? Some churches believe that if you are not baptized like them, they are not going to and they won't allow the members to marry outside the church because they say, oh no, that's not the, the, the only thing that was by Hamas. So, 
No, we are all on astray from what Jesus said that people have brought this added their own rule. This is the way we use this. God gave you ten commandments, but by the time we use space, there were two thousand rules for the people to observe. And the people do not observe this. But most of those rules, that like ninety percent of them were added by the uh, fathers, not God. God gave only ten commandments. Remember when the Jerusalem Council? Uh, Paul had to go and uh, debate with uh, Peter because some people said that unless the Gentiles uh, were circumcised, they would not enter heaven. They were still following the book of Moses. And Paul said, No, God did not tell me that. God said that they have now been entered the covenant of God. So we had a meeting. And in that meeting, <laughs> Peter said that, Look, all these commandments, we ourselves Jews cannot give away the tongues of the Gentiles. Why not just put such a yoke upon them? So just give them all rules. I've seen from love, from communication, give to the poor, and all this. There's four regulations at all. And the church increased it. They didn't follow any Jewish law or the Torah. And God increased the miracles that happened among them by wildfire. Why? Because all they had was faith in Christ. Does this describe the church full of traditions, full of customs, full of the life of tenets, rather than Christ? You need to know more about the tenets of the church than about Jesus Christ or the Bible. The answer is yes, we are really in trouble and we need to repent for that. So, God says, We will love us all among the people. Why is this? For the wisdom of the wise men shall perish, and the understanding of the holy men shall be healed. Won't they that seek thee to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works and the dark, and the same who seeth us, and who knoweth us? Exactly what I was saying. After they leave the church, even though they are the shepherd, evangelist, or whatever, they go and be the shine. So if nobody knows, this is what my power is. Under their garments, they have all kinds of outlets. And bands and the wear of the rings on the hands. See, these are the works of the dark. And see, nobody knows, but God knows. God knows the story of the lady at the end of this church who had come to visit the harvest, even though she was not the church. At the end, yes, the church, as she was coming, she was frozen. She would not talk, she could not move. That would carry her to the church. Before they arrived, only she that told the founder, Pastor Ponder, that this mom will brought to you, she's been punished because she went to see her legs. And as the brought her, I prayed for her, so full of water on her, and she came to life. But God judged her for doing that. So you might think nobody knows, but God knows. The biggest thing is God knows. Whatever you do in the dark, God sees. They say, Who sees us? So surely you are turning your things upside down so that this thing as a potter spray. Or shall the walk say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing friend of him say that when they can understand? In other God is saying that their behavior that are rebelling against him is as if they are their own creator. Now, in other words, the potter and the clay that he uses. So the clay now is not telling the potter what to do. When it's actually the potter, who is God, who should mold the tree to whatever he wants. That's what everybody is saying. You know? Uh-huh. They're saying that, you know, this is what you want to do, it's God. Don't do this to us. That's what Psalm 94, verse 9. Job 22, 13 and 14. Job 22, and Jeremiah 14, verse 7. And 
That's what you are doing. You are following what the fathers were doing more than what God said. This is how the church is doing. This is when the church is staggering at a dropping man or put out a post without direction for God. Because they violated God's commandments. First Timothy 1 says. Lord Jesus Christ, I've seen the gifts of God, I've seen the gifts of man, 
have my sins for me today. Wash my sins away with the precious blood. Forgive me my sins and make me born and pure. Come into my heart and roll and reign over my life. Take my name from the book of the dead and put my name in the book of life. And I promise to follow you on the days of my life. Thank you for saving my soul. And says, you really said that I meant sincerely from the bottom of your heart. You are saved and born again and the way to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ will come into your hearts. He will bring the Holy Spirit who will begin to train you and teach you to become like the other brother Jesus on your way to the kingdom of heaven. And I just pray, Heavenly Father, thank you for the truth which shine in our hearts today. Thank you for the lights that's carrying you in the darkness, you know, the spirit, to come to you in sincerity and truth. To follow your commandments and not the commandments of man. Deliver us from some idolatry and rebellion against you. Open us with your eyes once again to be to hear from you and to be by your spirits. Let us not more be like this drunken person, staggering from all the other things. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, no.